All right. Good morning, Mount Gilead. Good morning, everyone who might be watching this daily devotion. These are uh, daily reminders of the truth that's found in God's Word and how we can encourage one another through these things, um, how we can uh, continue to be reminded of uh, what God's Word says and, and anchor our life on that. And um, so I'm I'm enjoying these, uh, these daily devotions that those of us on staff and some others get to participate in and, and bring to you. And hopefully this is something that uh, that has been encouraging to you. Hopefully it's brought some hope uh, in the midst of this season. And uh, I, I look to do the same today. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day outside. And I'm excited about getting outside a little bit today, um, a little bit later. But uh, it looks like a few people are here, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, today is... Uh, I, I was really searching my heart, was searching through kind of what I'm I'm thinking and what I'm what I'm feeling right now um, in the midst of this season, and uh, this season, as as we've probably talked almost every day, uh, it just feels like everything's changing. You may have been in this season where everything's changing um, before, like COVID hit, before the pandemic just kind of rocked the world. Um, but but regardless, this. This is a season of, of change that has been affecting all of us. And um, some people love change. They thrive in it. They, they get excited about it. Um, they look for opportunities in it, and that's awesome. Hey, Sherry, good to see you. Brenda, good to see you. Good morning. Hey, Jerry. Hey, Vicki. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, yes, some people look for the op- are great at looking at for the opportunity in change. Um, some people are are maybe paralyzed by it. They they're um, they're fearful of the change, and, and it, the anxiety kind of just riddles them, and um, not sure what to do. So they just kind of stay put, ride it out. Um, and uh, and others are are kind of frantic when it comes to change, and they're 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 clinging to any sense of normalcy in the midst of change, and so. Um, they're even maybe looking for a way to go back to the way things were before things changed in the first place. There's, there's all these different responses to when all of these things change. And, uh, and I'm not sure that any one of them is, is necessarily wrong or, or one of them is more right than the other one. Um, and so I'm not necessarily interested in that and looking at the, the correct response. I, I just think re- regardless of what the response is, um, I think it's helpful to be reminded that there is an anchor, that there is, uh, there is some things that never change. And uh, even, as we're, even, even as we're talking to each other about this season, about all of the things that are changing, we may be absolutely right, and we may absolutely be true in the things that we're saying, and, uh, but we can say the right things, we can say the true things, and still be wrong in the way we say them. And, uh, and I, th- I think the passage that we're talking about today, it talks about this, and then it, and it talks about these things that never change. And this is a passage of scripture that's familiar probably to you. If you've ever been to a wedding, you, you've heard this passage, probably. Um, but let's, let's read it in a fresh way this morning. Let's apply it to our lives today uh, and, and this weekend. And in the midst of everything that is changing, let's, let's anchor our life on these things that never change. Uh, let's open with uh, let's open to First Corinthians chapter thirteen, and I'm just going to read this for us as we jump in. And yet I will show you the most excellent way, Paul writes, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains. But do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all if I give all I all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. See, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. 
Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, when it is in part disappears, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Maybe in the midst of this season, you have found yourself uh, cooped up with people and spending a prolonged amount of time with with people that uh, that live in your house or that that are around you and uh, you have an extended opportunity to come uh, come into this definition of love and see um, that it is patient and kind and maybe you have had to uh, exhibit patience and kindness in ways uh, that you've never extended it to others before uh, because of the unique situation that is in right now but I just wanted to give you hope in the midst of this this season where everything is changing. As this chapter comes to a conclusion in verse 13, let's just look at that verse again. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Let's evaluate why we do what we do. Why we work where we work, why we follow Jesus the way we follow him because of faith and hope and love. And the greatest of these is love. In the midst of everything that is unchanging, let's, let's recenter ourselves. Let's anchor ourselves on these things that, that don't change. They will always remain. And the greatest of these is love, the sacrificial love. Um, let's, uh, let's go to God in prayer, and then we'll be finished for today. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. That is a lamp into our feet. It's a light into our path. Father, thank you for this passage that shows us what love is, gives us this description, but also reminds us uh, in the midst of everything that is changing, that this is unchanging, that faith, hope, and love will remain. And the greatest of these three things is love. Father, I pray that we would be a people that are marked by love. I, I pray that that would be central to who we are and every interaction we have, whether it's here online or face-to-face, uh, -face, Lord, that it would be marked by love. Jesus said that people will know that we are Christians, that we are followers of Jesus by the way we love. And so I pray that this definition of love, patience and kindness and not self-seeking and not keeping a record of wrongs, Lord, that that would, that would mark our lives. That would mark our presence today because you have so uh, richly poured out your love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We can't thank you enough for these things. In the midst of these things that are unchanging, Lord, help us to anchor to the truth of your love. We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right. Hey, thank you guys for joining today for the daily devotions. Uh, I want to remind you, of course, uh, worship online at mgchurch.live tomorrow at 10 a.m. And there's also going to be an opportunity to watch that at 5 p.m. Uh, so you're able, if you're able to connect with some people or get some people together uh, in your house to, to watch that, maybe the 5 p.m. option is better for you. And uh, if you haven't gone to our, our Facebook page or to, uh, to our website, there is information about restarting and, uh, and reopening the campus to gatherings coming up uh, in, the, in the coming weeks and months. So please check that out. There's also a survey that you can take to just kind of help us wrap our, our minds around how to best serve our community and be safe as we uh, gather back together. For now, uh, that's it. God bless you. Have a great day and hope to, uh, to see you uh, join with us tomorrow as we worship. We pray. Um, I don't know how to sign this, these things off. So I'll take care. <laughs>